What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back. I have an awesome, awesome pickup, OG pickup. Shout out to my guy, Seth. Um, he's always looking. I'm always looking. He came across these first, and I got another pair with them, actually. It's pretty awesome. I'll share later, but for today, we have the Cross Trainer Low Uno, Dos, Tres in white, gray, and infrared. Uh, Athletic Express for 67 bucks, and here's the retro we will be comparing soon. It is a solid retro. I've kept those dead stock. I haven't worn them because, you know, this is the only pair I had. And uh, I really like this shoe. Trainer E, a few years later. Um, but I do love the Trainer 3 as well. So, very, very excited to rock those this summer since we got the OG. Uh, so, here's a classic box. Orange, got the stripe. Nike, when they did the retro. Pre comparison, you could say. Uh, your standard orange box, unfortunately, they didn't go with all the details of this bad boy like they did it with the Air Max 90s a few years after, or a year, I can't remember, 2019, something like that. Uh, 18? I don't think COVID. Anyway, sidebar. Uh, the cross training collection of fall 1990. So we'll flip through this really quick. The SC High. Those retroed, I believe, not too long ago. There's some women's stuff. You guys can always pause and read. Keep it out. But yeah, definitely wanted to show. I love these old pamphlets. It'd be really cool if Nike, you know, they did actually just with the infrared um, in 2020 retro, they brought that back. Um, with just that certain page, you know, it wasn't the whole packet, but they had that at least. But there they are. So we have the dead stock. They're massive. They are size 15. I'm not going to apologize because these are extremely hard to find. You know, when you had the OGs back in the day, a lot of people, especially as years went on, collected the Air Jordans, dead stock. A lot of these Nikes, like I would admit myself, you know, we we had them, we um, we beat them up, and we threw them out, unfortunately. You know, I wish I had kept my all my Nike runners and basketball shoes and all that stuff, but it just wasn't the case. Um, so now that's why I kind of like rehunting pairs I didn't have or get pairs back dead stock that I did have because they're just nostalgic quality obviously was amazing and um, just you know that's bringing back all the nostalgia that I had as a kid and wanting all these pairs so super duper excited to have these even in a size 15 for size 15 more bang for the buck um, just really really nice construction Beautiful leather. Let's show you guys up close really quick, the panels. So you got all the perforated panels and then the full grain leather. Plenty of hashtag sneaker crack. Pop the tongs. Did have the hang tag here, your Nike. No bubble, just the plastic like we see in some of the retros these days. Love the infrared. I'm always a sucker for infrared if you guys know me. You know I love the infrared. Um, definitely some differences. Uh, we are going to point out very soon. Just happy to finally find these. And they traveled safely through eBay and through people's hands that probably shouldn't be touching them. And they didn't get destroyed in the shipping process of extra transit. So yeah, this pair and another I will share in the near future. But before that, we will be doing the comparison with the 1990 to the retro of just a few years back. All right, so we have the toe shot and the toe box is really well done on this retro. Um, you are gonna see obviously the scale of size difference, but the cuts, you know, everything should be pretty close. Um, I think they did a pretty good job with this retro. And, you know, there's definitely some things they could have improved, but for a first shot, it's really good. Um, so let's point out some differences though. You know, there's definitely, definitely differences. Uh, the leather itself is really nice on the OG full grain. Then the perforated full grain leather is really nice. On the retro, you can see it's actually nice. It's kind of buttery, soft. But then I don't know why all the perforated leather they didn't use the same. They it's kind of got it's it's definitely a cheaper. It's got a kind of a I don't know, just not high of grade, uh, thinner cut, just not as as nice. But at least. This feels like they had the Cross Trainer 1 that came out around that year, and it feels like all this leather. So at least for these panels where it's not perforated, they use a little higher quality. Um, you'll see this comes down a little bit, a little sharper cut, 
here uh, and the mesh is really fine here on the tongue and here it's kind of got this nice texture a little contrast you know it's kind of just very very plain on the retro and then on the OG it's got just that little more contrast some oxidation here or the eyelets are at a little bit but those look pretty pretty straight on nothing too too much to differ about uh, so we have the black lining comes up pretty high on the Nike Nike's smaller and here Nike is a little bigger on the retro lining is just a little thinner I think the tongue's height a little taller scale on the on the OG maybe just slightly so I'm not gonna keep tugging as you know I like to keep that polyurethane nice um, but yeah for the gray lining it's pretty spot on nothing too crazy this kind of rolls over a little more and this kind of cuts here there's definitely some more differences when we look to the heel, which we will do next. All right, now we're looking at the heel, and you can tell definitely some major differences. The first is the contrast with the mesh, kind of like the tongue, and they just put leather right here. Uh, a little more OG font. I like to say looser um, stitching. It's not looser, it's just, you know, the style of a little more refined here. This is actually reflective too. I'll drop a photo and I took just to show you guys the difference. So it's all the nice full grain leather and this is totally, totally different. It has a flash. Ah, you know, trying to do something different, which I'm absolutely a-okay with that. Uh, look, I'm just tip back really quick. You guys can see Nike Air. Nike Air, just white and infrared. And on the OG, it's infrared on black, which I actually prefer. I think it looks better. Heights again, there's a size difference, so don't don't go crazy about that. Um, it's probably probably right around the right scale. Uh, midsole, the tooling, I, you know, this retro is pretty solid. I think the midsole tooling they did a really good job. You can even see it here between um, that and the OG, even with the size difference, slight oxidation here, but again, I think it looks pretty good. You can see the. The lining kind of came around a little higher or a little more wrapped around here into the mesh. Uh, but nothing too crazy to note. Other than that, we could try to peek. No, I think the tag's on the inside, actually, so we'll skip that. But yeah, tongues you can kind of see on the back side here a little different. Um, yeah. All right, so we're looking toe to toe. And it is size 15, so it's just more massive. The toe box on the retro, it looks good. It looks really good. Uh, the paneling, the layout's just slightly, ever so slightly different. Nothing super drastic, but you guys can see the different details. Uh, again, the leather panels, perforated and full grain look beautiful on the, on the OG. The retro, I just wish they used the same quality. Exact same leather, that's all they had to do and for that. Either way, it's still, still cool. I'm really happy these came back and I'm super excited for this OG and to wear these pretty much right after this video. <laughs> so it's pretty awesome. Uh, the infrared even is pretty, it's pretty spot on. Again, the tooling even all the way back, it's pretty, it's pretty darn close. So simple, but sometimes you see the simplest of things, but there is accents, you see that get messed up. Uh, the swoosh is a little lighter, gray. Scale wise, it might be a little longer, but it's probably just the scale. I mean, if you drop a line for where it, it comes down, and even like these little spaces, it looks pretty spot on. It's probably just the larger size. Uh, and you got the infrared here, notes, and here you can see it's thinner cut. So they, you know, they got the eyelets, you know, down pretty well. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing too, too much, you know, toe boxes on Nikes, you know, when they get it, when they get it good, it's good. And this is, this is good. The trainers usually have more of a, you know, it's kind of a multi-purpose shoe, so it shouldn't be super pointy like a running shoe. Um, it could be kind of roomy, you know, people like think about Bo Jackson, like lifting weights, stuff like that. So it's kind of a multi-purpose. You could run in them. Hey, you want to go shoot some hoops after working out? That was the whole purpose of the training line, to kind of multi-purpose. So it, it looks good. I think they did a really good, good job on the toe box. And overall, as you can see, toe to toe, they look they look pretty spot on. All right, we wanted to show them a dial side too, just because, you know, it's so layout is very similar and they did a good job on this side as well. Uh, this looks higher, but it could just be the size. I feel like it could be, you know, it's just got the little nicer shape, I think, on the back panel. Another thing I want to point out is the perforations. They're, they are slightly larger on the OG. 
you look from here and you look to here, they're a little, a little smaller, man, that leather. When you can touch this and then you go back to here, you're like, oh man, <laughs> like why couldn't they just do this right here? Uh, you can kind of see it's kind of reflective again. Um, all the details, you know, the mesh. There's great things about this retro, but just a few little details that um, I wish they had they had done. But um, you know, again, shape with the midsole and the tooling, it looks really good. All the way down to the toe box, from the heel to the toe, and I'm pretty sure the height for the size difference, it's pretty spot on with that. We can't forget the outsole, so let's look at the outsole. Uh, tooling again on the retro looks really good. All the accents. Even the texture, you know, it's pretty, pretty well replicated. Infrared is just a little more vibrant. It's got a little more pop to it. This is a little duller, but it still looks great. It's just a little, little different. And this is, you know, this is from 1990. So it's, you know, even if it oxidized a little bit, it still has that color punch, which is great. And you can see even like the white, that would true definition of like how much oxidation has come through and not, it's not that bad. It's, it's fairly light, um, more so on the polyurethane as we saw the side shots and everything. But yeah, I mean, you know, there's the lines come up a little all the way to the ends here. You can see just very, very little things that probably nitpick, but just to show you the biggest difference is definitely with the, in, the shade of infrared. All right, so here's the wrap on the comparison. We have the 1990 Trainer 3 infrared, beautiful. Again, thanks to Seth for this one and another pickup that will be showing soon good to catalog it you know log it for um for future reference because sneaker crack does not go away it only gets worse um i've been doing this with newer retros but you know what let's write this retro like how good is it it's good is it great no it's not great but it's good i would rate this guy at an eight it's cool they came back there's some quality stuff on here it's a few things that i would like to see changed but overall, it is it is a nice retro. You know, it's got a nice shape to it. And I, I definitely, definitely am going to rock these very soon with lots of pride. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a cool trip down memory lane. Um, it's always special just getting something, especially these days when you're ordering stuff and it's going through extra hands through eBay, unfortunately. I wish they would just have an opt-out option where you don't have to have everything go through authentication, which is fine for retros. I think it's great. But for stuff like this, it should not be needed. It doesn't It doesn't have to be needed. So it should be the buyer's discretion. Um, but that's just kind of a side note, a little thought of my own. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll see you guys soon. Don't forget to subscribe. You can follow me at OG or Bust on Instagram. And we'll see you soon.